everyone, I'm Jody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. If you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. We are all about helping busy and ambitious women 40 plus look and feel their very best with quick pieces of information that is useful, reliable, and product reviews that you can count on. So today's discussion is all about, and I, it's really not even a discussion because I don't get the feedback from you guys. So it's like a one way conversation, which I'm sorry about that. I hope this isn't a problem that you have, but if it is, then this might be a good solution for you. So if you're like me, you're starting to get that hollowed out space under your eyes. Now, if I've had too much drinking the night before or too much salt the day before, I can get a little puffy, which is the opposite problem. But most times it is, you know, the, the curse and the blessing, I guess, of higher cheekbones is that as you start to lose that collagen, you start to have those hollowed out areas. I'm not one that wants fillers in that area. I'm not opposed to fillers in other areas, but I just don't want a needle that close to my eye. So I thought there's gotta be a solution. So I've been playing around, playing around, playing around with different tricks and products and placement of those products to find a solution that works and, after a lot of trial and error, and luckily I guess I have the benefit of videos where I can look back and go, yeah, that one didn't work so well with the lighting because it doesn't do any good to share a tip and trick with you if it works good only in person but not in photography or if it works good in photography but not in person. We kind of want a solution that does it all. I want to be able to walk out in the sunlight. I want to be in a dark room with candles. I want to have lights and it work the same way. So what I'm gonna share with you today is how to hide or camouflage that hollowed out space. And it works the same for fine lines and wrinkles under your eyes, as well as the smoker lines around your mouth. Now, I've never been a smoker, but I have been a fan of straws for the longest time until I realized how terrible they are in the environment. And now I'm not a straw person, but I used to use straws all the time. And I think that's sort of what's helped cause those fine lines around your mouth. Getting older is so wonderful, isn't it? So I have a solution that you will want to try. I'm gonna share with you the tips and tricks to camouflage that area and hide some of those smoker lines around your mouth. So if you're ready, then let's get started. Okay, so here we are, and I have removed all the makeup from under my eye on this side, because ironically enough, this side is always puffy in the morning and this side is never puffy. And you'd think that maybe I sleep this way so all the liquid drains to this side of my head. Not the case. I don't know what that's about. In fact, one time I went in to see um, a dermatologist and they're like, do you have some filler in there you'd like us to remove? And I thought, I wish, I wish it was removable filler. But anyway, that happens if I eat too much salt the day before and I know better. And I'd like to say I did it last night just so that I could further demonstrate this technique to you guys, but that would be a lie. To help camouflage these lines, it's not just a cosmetic overlay. I really try to keep that collagen rebuilding itself. So every two to three weeks, probably three weeks, I will grab my micro needle and then I have a complete video on how to do this. I'll link it above if you're interested, but I will micro needle that area. And since it's completely clean now, I will just do that. And I will, do that a few times, like I said, every three to four weeks, it's bringing tears to my eyes because it is slightly painful. It's just helping to build the collagen. So we can put makeup on top of it all we want, but if we're not helping the collagen underneath rebuild itself, then it's sort of like I'm only doing half the job. So I definitely do that. I don't do that in my eye area because that's not the problem there. That's It's too fluid and too plumpy here. And the fact that I could do it probably right here along my cheekbone because of that hollowness from my dad's great cheekbones. But I just, it's just a little too close to my eye so I'm not comfortable doing that. Now again, you can get filler there, but that's not what this video is about. I'm just gonna show you how to camouflage it. Two different approaches in terms of the skincare piece of it. Now let's get to the cosmetic part. The first thing that I do is I add a little bit of moisturizer after I've put on my sunscreen. And what I've really been enjoying is this Clinique Smart Clinical Repair. It's not necessarily new. You guys have probably seen that before. And let me pause for a second and say that because I always forget this and I, I know you guys in the comments ask me afterwards, so I'm trying to get better at it. The shirt is from Rag and Bone. It is a few years old. I don't know if you can get it anymore. I will link it. Um, it's really cute though. It has black cuffs and it's just buttoned down. I have it just with some black skinny jeans. I'll insert a picture because I just have some um, little boots on with it. 
it's not probably not available which is why i hesitate talking about my clothes but there you go and then these earrings i believe are kendra scott but i'll double check i always buy my not always but the majority of my jewelry I buy at Nordstrom Rack. And since I've been talking, I lost so much of this moisturizer, so we're gonna go back and get that. I do buy most of my jewelry at Nordstrom Rack when it's on sale. Um, I don't buy a lot of like fashion big statement pieces. I buy more kind of classic pieces, so that's always a good place to go check out some, some cool jewelry. All right, so I just like to get that area nice and moist, and this is for both cases. So I'm gonna do them simultaneously so that you can see it works in both spots. And I'll let that sit for, I don't know, five, six minutes while it really can sort of penetrate the skin and plump it. And that helps the rest of the application. So now that that is penetrated into the skin, the next step, and I really do think that this product is sort of what makes this process work. This is the Tatcha Silk Canvas that I've highlighted for you guys before. I think it was in like my March favorites. The texture of this is, you know, you just use a little bit of, I think I told you that they said to just use a rice size amount and that's really all I do. It is a primer, but what I love about this for this technique is it presses into the fine lines and the wrinkles. I don't know, they're not even fine at this point, they're wrinkles. It presses into the wrinkles and sort of smooths out. So it's kind of like filling in a pothole, if you will. That's probably a really bad analogy, but it's probably so accurate. Oh my goodness, forgive me for that, but that's kind of how I feel some days. Uh, and so I just take that and press it, like in this case, I go under my fine line, my lines, under my eye and really press it in. And then I will do that down here where I have those smoker lines. And it just, the texture of this, I think is what makes this work. It's a, it doesn't have a fragrance. It has, um, it's like a, it fills in like the, the consistency of a pow, like a wet powder, but it doesn't slip. And I think that's what makes it work so well in this process. So in my eyes, we're gonna address two things. Like I said, we're gonna address those fine lines, those lines under my eye, and we're gonna address this gap here where it's starting to kind of cave in between my cheekbone and my eye because that really shows up in a lot of pictures. Okay, so we're gonna just let that, and it is a primer, so if you don't have this one, you can try this with a regular primer. I don't know if it will work the same. If it's a silicone primer, it might work because that has a little bit more thickness to it and can really start to fill in those lines. But if it's a real, if it's a thin primer, I don't think you'll get the same result. Okay, so now that that is pressed in, the next thing that we're gonna do is for up here, I do have a little color correct to work through. So I'm gonna use the Makeup Forever um, dullness eraser. This is in yellow because again you can see that purpleness underneath my eye. And I'm just going to press that in everywhere and I'm even going to press it up into that hollow area even though it's not purple because I want to add some brightness to that. Now this is where you might start to roll your eyes and go well, I don't know about that but just trust me trust the process because it's yellow it's a color corrector for the purple but it also is a brightening area. Now usually what we hear is if there's an area you don't like or there's an imperfection you don't want to draw attention to it in this case because this is a divot if you will what causes it to look so bold or to be so highlighted is because of the shadowing because it goes in so there's too much shadow there so we want to bring light to where the shadow is so that it is more bright and not a shadow effect does that make sense i didn't pass art class as i've probably shared with you guys before Okay, now at this stage, we've added three products. So I know you're probably thinking, oh, that's a lot for lines underneath your eyes and your smoker's lines. But trust me, it's not when you add the moisturizer and then that primer and then just a little bit of that color corrector only in this area. So lips have two products, up here have three so far. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is add your concealer. Now the key here is to add your concealer up here on the eye where we're gonna fix that divot to the higher side of the divot that is causing the shadow. We don't wanna highlight what is already in the light. We only wanna highlight what is in the shadow because then it will not be in the shadow, if that makes sense. So right here, what's causing that shadow is this divot right here. So I just wanna go inside the divot and bring that out. 
and then I want to cover up some of the purple over in this area but out here I just want to stay real high in that divot area okay so now that we have that where we want it placed we don't want to move it around because we again we're gonna ruin the effect of that high of the highlighter and the concealer if we then put it in the area that is already showing we just want to bring out the shadow part so I just have a damp beauty sponge because it's a wider area. If you have a smaller area, you can certainly reach for your synthetic brush and just really lightly pat it right where you want it and just press it in. But again, don't bring it too far down that is against the shadow. The art teachers are probably going, there's a name for that. And once you get that concealer pressed where you want it, I just let it sit there and sort of set up, if you will. And then I will go finish my lip area, which is now that we've put on the primer in that area and really pressed it in, the lip is almost done. I just, from there, will go and add a little bit of foundation. And in this case, I'm using what I've been using, which is the B40 in All Hours Foundation by YSL. And I'll link all these products down below. Then I'll just go back in with that foundation and go over that primer. And I'm just going to blend it into the rest of my makeup since I didn't take off my whole face. Just And I did that so that you guys could see really what that foundation looks like once you blend it back into everything. But I think that primer makes a huge difference. Okay, now the lips are almost done. I would just take a little tiny, tiny bit of setting powder and I would put it in the lid. This is the Laura Mercier translucent powder. Take a damp beauty sponge, put it in the powder. And then I just take the rest of it off with my hand because I just want a, a, just a small, small amount of it. And press that into that area. And there you go. See, doesn't that look so much better? Now, in terms of the eye, what we will do, because we just left that concealer, then we will go back in with a little bit of foundation so that it can blend with the rest of the color on the skin. Right on top of that concealer. Little, little tiny bit though. And if you don't wear foundation, then obviously you would skip this step. Okay, now here's the part that you might go, I don't know, Jody, because now we're at product, moisturizer, primer, concealer, foundation, and this is gonna be a fifth product. So you're gonna be thinking, oh my goodness. But remember over here, we are trying to fill in that hollow space. And if you have that hollow space, you know what I mean. And the more we age, the more hollow areas get. So this technique can work in this area. It can also work if you feel like you're getting really, you know, more of a thin area up here and you just wanna add some bulkiness or some volume here. Bulkiness, that's probably, who wants to add bulkiness to the sides of their face? But you know what I mean, if you can add some fullness and it can also work through your cheekbones too. So if you feel like you're just sort of getting taunt underneath from here down, then add some highlighter in this area so that it pulls it forward. So that's what we're gonna do in this case. This is the e.l.f. Um, Flawless Brightening Concealer. And I've used this before and I really do enjoy it. So it just is a sort of a neutral color and you'll wanna go darker with this if you have darker skin tones because this is, you wanna add, this is a highlight. We wanna use a liquid highlight. Now, again, you may be thinking, why do I wanna highlight an area that is the imperfection? We don't wanna highlight this whole gap area. We just wanna highlight the part that is indented and stop at the part that comes out. Because if we highlight the whole thing, then we're gonna further exasperate that was a big word, but I did it. We're gonna further exasperate that divot in your face. So I'm just gonna go right where that indention is and highlight that area, because again, I wanna pull it forward. And then from there, you can use whatever you're most comfortable with, depending on the space. If it's a smaller space, use a fine brush. And if it is a larger space, you can use more of a damp beauty sponge. Because mine's a smaller space, I don't want to move that everywhere. I just want to address the area where it is. I'm just going to put that and blend it right in the divot. 
or the collagen deficient area. That sounds better than divot. Unless you're a golfer, then you're like, yeah, I've got that. I've got that on my face. And then with that highlight, I'm just gonna pull it up through the temple since that is um, an area that could use some more fullness. And that will just add light to that area and have it show more uh, bold, more volume. And then from there, you guys, that same process as setting it, just take a little, a damp beauty sponge, a little bit of powder, and set that highlight area. Now, underneath the eye, if you have the lines under your eyes, you don't wanna do this highlight area because we didn't do that down here. So the lines under your eyes, you'll wanna treat the same as we did the lip. If you have the divot area or the loss of volume in some places, then you'll wanna do this extra highlight plus powder step to pull it forward. From there, I would just reline my lips with my lip liner, and which I did not bring in here, but that's okay. We'll just go on with some lipstick. This is um, Tom Ford Blush Nude, and go. And there you go. So now your look is ready for indoors, outdoors. Now I know this probably felt like a lot of steps, but it really isn't once you get the hang of it. The key is if there's an area for lines and wrinkles, I would find a good primer and I've tried several of them. You guys, for me, what worked best was this Tatcha rice, rice canvas. I think of rice every time I look at it because that's the size silk canvas. And again, all this, these products will be linked in the description box below, but a silicone based primer that you can press in and sort of fill those lines, let it set, then put your concealer. And then if there's areas where you want to pull forward it, where there's some shadowing, that's where you'll want to use that highlighter and then set it. So I hope this helps. It's really not as many steps as it looked like. Well, it is as many steps. It's not, it doesn't take as long as I probably made it look, but this looks good indoors. It looks good outside in the sun. It looks good with a ton of lighting. If you're going to have some photography, it helps minimize the appearance appearance of aging. Now I will also say that while you've got that powder out, if you wear glasses, remember a nice tip on that is if you wear foundation and concealer under your eyes, then just take that powder again and just extra powder where your lens set. And that really does help keep your glasses from sliding on top of your foundation and moving your foundation throughout the day. So there you go. I hope that tip helps. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. I think you'll be really happy with it. It is a little bit more of a full coverage look. So if you're just running around errands in the middle of spring, it might be a little heavier look than you want. But if it's a day to day in an office or, you know, some special occasion, I would definitely, definitely do this tip. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a good rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.